people that can't be here. So I know uh, I got a uh, text this week from Pam Rose, and you know she works uh, away from the church a lot, and she just thanked us for having that opportunity to be able to watch and, and, and hear the messages that she misses on Sunday. So, so praise the Lord for that. But we're continuing our series on celebrating the Advent experience, and we really want you to experience uh, the Advent season, experience Christ, and really what Christmas is about. I think sometimes we miss out. You know, we get in so we're so busy and things are going on, and we just don't we don't stop and really pause and really think about what Christmas is about and what we're supposed to be supposed to be celebrating. And many of us, you know. Uh, uh, have a hard time believing it, I think, sometimes. How many are familiar with Ripley's Believe It or Not? Anybody yeah. heard that? Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy, Robert Ripley, started this thing where he would he would uh, come up with these different things, and he has, he has books, he has museums, he has TV shows. And you know the interesting thing about this, is I, as I was reading more about it, is in everything that he puts out there, he never tells you whether it's true or not. He makes you decide on whether it's true or not. And I got thinking about that because this week our, our message is to be blessed. But to be blessed, you have to believe. And I think some of us still don't truly believe. We think it's pretty sure, but we haven't really gone all in and really believed. And there's other things, you know, that like this that we must believe in to be blessed. And that's what God wants from us today. That's what God wants to do for you today. And in today's passage, we find John the Baptist. We find him in prison. And it's interesting because here's this guy who was ushering in the Messiah, and now he's doubting who Jesus is. And I got thinking about that. I thought, man, here's John the Baptist doubting. And he, he, he's the one who said, you know, I, I, I'm not even worthy to baptize him. I wouldn't even wear his shoes. I mean, all of that. And now he's still doubting in prison about what's going on. And, you know, God wants to bless him too. And it's, you know, I think sometimes it's when you be reminded of what God can do for us, what he's doing in the world and around us, so we don't get discouraged by it. So our, our passage today is in Matthew chapter 11, verse 2 through 11. And we're going to go through this pretty much verse by verse. So if you don't have a Bible with you, grab one in the pew. Find Matthew, stand, when you find Matthew, stand up, and then we're going to go ahead and read this, that passage together, okay? Matthew chapter 11, verse 2 through 11. It starts in verse 2, it says, When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What do you what did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. It will send, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you the truth among those born of, of women there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet he who is the least of the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Oh Lord, we just praise you, Lord, and, and help us this morning, Lord, you know, to, to be blessed and, and to believe, Lord, and to look around us and see the things that are that you're accomplishing around us. And sometimes, Lord, when we're sitting here and we're out in the world, we don't think you're there, you're not hearing us, you're not with us. And help us to be reminded, Lord, that you're right there next to us. And to see all that's going on around us. And God, help us to believe. To believe like never before, Lord. So just fill us with all you have this morning, Lord. And we give you all praise and all glory. Amen. Amen. Just 
think about that a moment. So let that kind of go forward to your brain a little bit. Believe it or not. It's hard sometimes, you know, when things aren't going your way, you expect things to go a certain way to believe, isn't it? Like, why isn't he answering this prayer of now for me? I need him now. I was doing, I, I prayed more yesterday than I probably prayed in a long time for Donna because she was in pain yesterday and last night. Why aren't you answering me, God? Right. Why aren't you healing her? Why aren't you making her feel better? That's right. Where are you? I was crying out those words last night. But I also told him I loved him and I knew that whatever this is going on, he's going to give her the strength to get through it. Amen. And that's what we need to hold on to. That's the hope. Amen. The things of the world is kind of like, go away. And God's our only hope. We need to celebrate that and be, and be blessed by it. So Jesus is the Messiah, it says in verse 25, in both word and deed. We need to read the word and, and, and understand what it says in there. Read the promises and understand what God says he's going to do. He's, he does. It, 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 it's in there. If you just take time and read it. And John heard about his ministry in, in verse 2 and 3 about the ministry of Jesus while he was in prison. Just imagine, you know, you're John the Baptist and, and you're ushering in the Messiah and you're sitting in prison and and, you're, and, and you have all this junk going on around you with, with Antipas and all his gang there and all the things that they're doing. And, and he's doubting, well, why isn't he doing something about it? I'm in prison. Fix this for me. You know, you know I, I'm, the, I'm the greatest of these. You told me who I was. I'm, 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 I'm the best. Help me. I felt that way a little bit last night. Help me. Help the hunt. Help us. Many of us have been through that this year. Help us. We need to just wait upon him. And John was honestly seeking the truth, I think. I think he honestly was, in some ways, doubting him. And he wanted to know if Jesus was the one that was prophesied about in the Old Testament. It's a little puzzling that John would ask this question, though, isn't it? Knowing who he was, why would he ask that? He already recognized it. Jesus was the one, the, the most powerful one, who, who would baptize with the Holy Spirit of fire. He was the one. And you wonder, why, why would he doubt him now? I mean, John was even reluctant to baptize Jesus because he felt unworthy of him. Was John now having these nagging doubts about Jesus? <laughs> you remember happened to you? You just get in this doldrum and you just start doubting him, you know, you're kind of drifting away, and why isn't he doing this for me, doing that for me, what's happening? And you ever had that happen to you? And in those times where you felt like you were the greatest and everything was working out for you. Well, I'm going to tell you this morning, God's there in the good times and in the times that aren't so very good. And his strength will get you through any of that stuff. His promises are in the Word. When you really consider John's circumstances, this question about who Jesus may really not be that hard to understand why he's thinking this way. If you really stop and really think about this. But what he was hearing about Jesus wasn't matching up with his expectations. That ever happened to you? You hear all the stuff about you, oh, Pastor Don says how great Jesus is, trust him, have faith in him, hold on to him, he'll give you strength. And you expect it to happen in a certain way. And it doesn't. What happens to you? What do you do? I think of what John the Baptist did. He wanted, he wanted to find out what's going on here. I think this happens to us in our lives where what Jesus is saying to us doesn't line up with what we feel it should happen. I sometimes think people think that Jesus is a genie where you, you know, rub the little thing that's going to happen for you. It doesn't work that way. See, I think Jesus sees the big picture in our life. You know, he sees the beginning and the end and the whole thing. And he knows this little microscopic time period you're going through where it might not be so great. That you need to go through that. And he's going to stand by and give you strength to get through it. When you come out of it, you're going to realize how great it was to go through that because of where you're at today. And right now, you don't get it. You're like, 
You're starting to doubt him. Do I believe it or not? And you're just like Griffin. You're getting all the facts on both sides. You're trying to figure it out. <coughs> so somewhere down the line, you're going to have to throw away the facts and just believe it. Just believe. Just believe. Read the word. Find out what it says. So his, his expectations weren't matching up with what Jesus was saying. And he was sitting in Antipas' jail, facing possible execution, while, while Antipas and his entourage carried out with their lives of luxury. If Jesus was the Messiah, why wasn't there no judgment on the unrighteous? He's probably thinking. Why, are they, why isn't he doing something about it now for me? In verse 4 and 5, Jesus tells the disciples, go back and tell John what they've seen and heard. So Jesus tells them, okay, this is what we've seen and heard. And it points to the truth that he is the Messiah. I think the more we look at the big picture of things, even in our own little life right now, we can really understand and believe he is who he is. His words and miracles are spoken and performed so that people will know Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. I haven't been in too many churches, but this church is full of miracles. And many of us have seen miracles. Ark Sasena is a miracle. Marion Woodward is a miracle. We've been praying for her for a long time. When she first came back out of her sickness, I didn't even recognize her. God just... I didn't even recognize her. Ray, Rakamoto, who was here this morning, is another miracle. Three miracles in this little church. My brother Lionel, too. Lionel, too. What did I talk about that story? Lionel, too. Sarah, a miracle. Hank's a miracle. Holly's a miracle. Dave's a miracle. Look around. He performs these miracles, so we'll believe. And if we can't, and sometimes we think the Bible is so far away from us. It's alive and working today. It's right here in this room. It is amazing. And praise the Lord for that. So Jesus tells us in verse 5 what he's up to. He sends us back. Tell John the Baptist this. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news I preach to the poor. And the, Jesus, the reason Jesus was reporting this list of activities to John was not to inform him of what he already, already knew. The words in the verse come from several prophecies in Isaiah. If you've got a pencil, write these down and check them out later. Chapter 29, verse 18. Chapter 42, verse 7. Chapter 35, verse 5 and 6. Chapter 42, verse 18. And chapter 61, verse 1. Will reaffirm those prophecies and what Jesus was accomplishing and the miracles he was doing. And Jesus was implying that John should not be puzzled by what's going on. I'll be puzzled by what's going on. But his activities and engaging the simple fact that they were very activities that were prophesied about him. These are the very things that were said in the Old Testament was going to happen now. And I think sometimes we need to do that too. I think even in our own lives, it's happening today. In verse 5, not only lists the prophecies from Isaiah, but also summarizes the words and deeds of Jesus reported in the previous six chapters in Matthew. You really start digging into this stuff, it really all starts to connect. And you start to come alive when you start reading it. See, in chapters 5 and 7 of Matthew, we have the words of Jesus and the Sermon on the Mount. In 8 and 9, report the healing miracles of Jesus. And in chapter 10, is the mission instruction to Jesus, of Jesus to his disciples. In effect, Matthew demonstrated that Jesus fulfilled the prophecies of Isaiah in both the word and the Oh, he just didn't say it. He did it and accomplished it. Not only thousands of years ago, but today. We're so encouraging to see Ray come in today. That's a miracle. Well, we didn't know this man. We had no idea who he was, but every week was telling us. 
Kept us reporting. We kept praying for him. Everybody writing down his name. I, I, think, I think we know how to spell it. We know the last name now because we heard so much. And at first we're going, what, 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 what is that? But we got it now. We've been praying for that man. And praise the Lord that he is healed him. And that's what God does. He's showing us his miracles. We can have hope in him and we can be blessed by it. That's what it's about. You know, the first words, or the first verse of the Christmas favorite, our little town of Bethlehem, ends with the words, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in me tonight. Hopes, dreams, fears, you know what? They're all guided by our expectations of what a person believes could or should happen. And John the Baptist expected that the Messiah was ex would execute spiritual judgment and punishment upon those around him. And his Jewish counterparts expected that the Messiah would exert political and military leadership. And when Jesus failed to meet John's expectations, John began to doubt both Jesus and his ministry, which undoubtedly will lead led him to discouragement. And I think that's where we're led if we don't believe. We don't hold on. And we don't look for the things that are happening around us. Sometimes we're just so focused on just our little bubble here. Just to, we don't see all that's going on around us. And we need each other to remind us of that. You know? I know when Barbara and Dave were going through their stuff, you know, I was reminding them many times of things. It's so hard to look outside your circle when things are happening to you. And we need to be reminded of that. And she shared some stuff with me this morning that encouraged me. So that's what we need. That's how God works. And that's how we're blessed if we believe. And as we read this passage, you see that Jesus doesn't get down on John for his doubts, but he encourages him. You know, he could have probably got down there, but he's trying to encourage him because you know what? God blesses those who faithfully do the work he has called them to. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? God blesses those who faithfully, not just when they feel like it, not just when they have time to, but when God asks them to, to do the work that he's asked them to do. That's what that means. In verse 6, God promises to bless those who believe and place their faith in Jesus. And those who don't believe are going to stumble. You're going to fall back into the things of the world. And the things of the world only, only last about that long. Remember a few weeks ago? About that long, huh? Some of you guys remember that one, right? <laughs> We're not going to do that again, so I don't have to <laughs> See, blessing or being blessed is linked to the knowledge that God is working to guide and direct us in the right path. And believing that, you know, even though I'm stuck right here and I don't, I mean, my hole's getting deeper and I'm, I don't know how I'm going to get out of it, it's still holding on to God and knowing that yeah. there's a good reason why you're in that hole and, and going through that. Amen. Because somewhere down the road, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you. <clears throat> and you're going to realize why you were there. And you're going to go, thank you, Jesus, for that time. Because it's making you stronger. Your faith is stronger. And you're going to have that you're gonna have that joy no matter what's happening to you. And it's still hard, though, isn't it? You know, I was crying out to Jesus last night. You know, why aren't you doing something? I was just, I was just talking to him. Fix this now. You told me you would. And then I get this little sense in my head that, that he kind of tells me that he doesn't really talk, but I know what he's saying. And it's like, just, just be patient. You know? I'm going to give you the strength to get through it. It's okay. And that's what happened. And I think you know what he's doing for me? And I'll share it with you guys. I think it's helping me pray for my wife. Because I don't pray for her enough. I encourage you to pray for your loved one. More. Go up to him and hug him and pray for him. Let him know that you love him so much that you're going to pray to your God and Savior. Because <clears throat> he's the one that can change things. He's the one that can make things better. In some ways, I think that's what God is blessed he's teaching me through this. <clears throat> I don't know how many times I, I prayed for her uh, this last week. and I, I prayed for her and I would go out of the room and she would call me and I could just pray for me again. I don't know how many times I did that. But you know what? It's okay. Because that's where our strength is. 
It's not in me. It's not in the doctors. It's not in the nurses. Our strength is in Jesus Christ and His healing power and His strength to get us through whatever we're going through. And that's how you feel blessed. It doesn't matter what's going on because you're blessed. And life moves on, and we're all going to go through those things. Verse 7 and 11, Jesus begins to give high praise to John. And he has three questions for the audience, but he, he, but he has one question before. He says, what did you go out to, into the desert to see? Hmm. I can start thinking about that, too. If I was living back then, what would I expect to see if I went out to the desert to meet John the Baptist? Was he the one? Was he a prophet? All right, the same questions that most of the people there, there had. I would. Who is it? I've got to find out. Imagine if Jesus really walked in the room today. Wouldn't you have the same question? Is he really who he says he is? <laughs> I think most of you would know it. I have no doubt about that because your hearts are right with But he also had three other questions. First question was, did you go out to John expecting to see a reed swayed by the wind? See, reeds are small, soft bamboo plants that easily bend in the wind. And John was anything but somebody that would wave in the wind. Because his faith was, was, was planted and, and rooted in, 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 in Jesus coming again. And he knew. And I think the same with us. Don't be swayed by the wind. Don't be swayed by the circumstance you're going through right at this moment or this time period. Look at the big picture. That's what John was reminded of all the things that were going on. Second question is, did you get, did you go out expecting to see a man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes, Jesus says, are in king's palaces. I think maybe he's been contrasting the fancy clothes and luxuries of Antipas. All the luxury that's going on here, and there were so many poor, desolate people in Galilee that in those days. And it's no different now. How many times do you drive by somebody who's hungry, who's sleeping in the street, and go and have a nice dinner, or go out and shop, or buy something for yourself, or for something? How often do you do that? Tuesday night, I left the hospital at about 12, 30, 1 o'clock, and gone. We had to walk through this little area of the hospital that has trees around it, and it was like a blistering, freezing, I could feel the icicle up my, nose, up my nostril, it was about 40 degrees, right? That's not very cold, but it really, for me, it was. And how does a homeless person sleep out here? That's right. How do they do it? I got in my new little car and turned on the heated seat and the hot air, and I was feeling good. Yeah. What about that person laying on the street? We praise the Lord that our church reaches out to those people. And we, we're trying to love those people and care for those people. And not get caught up in all that's going on, all the merchandising and all the things the world is trying to, to, to shove at us, that we can we can still pause and, and help those in need. And that's why that angel tree is so important. What a way to show the love of Christ to somebody. And to show up with a family who has no idea who we are. And we show up with them. Dad go to gifts for your kids. And they're probably wondering, what are they going to do for the kids for? And God's going to answer that prayer through you people. So I encourage you to pick up one of those tags and be blessed by giving this year, not receiving. Mm -hmm. Question three. Did you expect to see a prophet? <laughs> Jesus answers, yes, I tell you. And more than a prophet. John was more than a prophet. He was the ushering in the Messiah. Because John would die, you know, before all, before all this came to fruition, before it all happened, he would, he would die before he saw all of that. But God promises to guide and direct the lives of those who believe and follow in them. He will use you in ways you never imagined if you're willing to be sensitive to his need. No matter where he asks you to go, just be sensitive to it. Maybe he's asking you to stay put. Be sensitive to him. See, we must be willing to surrender and embrace Jesus' way of life and we're going to be blessed. And so many are, well, why am I the blessed? Why? Think about how you're living your life. And what are you doing with the resources that you have? See, God doesn't force us to believe or not. That's 
He doesn't believe, he doesn't force us to follow him. And he can give us free will to either accept or reject him. And we need to choose whether or not we will follow Jesus the Messiah. Back to Ripley's, right? Believe it or not. That's what he's saying to us. And the world's way is different from the way of the Messiah. We must choose which way we'll go with our lives. You must choose. Not your mom, not your dad, not your grandma, not your grandpa, not your best friend. You personally must choose which way you want to go. Nobody can do that for you. You can't hang on to somebody else's God. He's got to be yours. And he's just waiting for you this morning to, to come to him. And, and he wants to bless you so much if you just believe in him. And despite the things Jesus said and the miracles he performed, people still did not believe who he said he was. And again, we think, well, that happened thousands of years or years ago. Uh -uh. That happened right here in this church. There's some who still don't believe when they've seen Art Sassana be healed the way this man was healed. Or Lionel, or all these. They don't believe it still. For those who do believe and surrender their lives to God, He promises to guide and direct their lives. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Amen. See, God's blessing means that we'll receive God's grace and live under His care. <coughs> what better care would you want to live under than the Messiah? He can care of you. When you get lost, he goes out and finds you. Even though there's there's a hundred, there, there's 99 left, and there, you take off, he's gonna go find you. And that's why some of you are back here today, because it's not by mistake. It's not by just because. It might not be, it might not even be because your child was up here performing this morning. It was an appointment by God to have you here to hear this message. And I believe that. God is speaking to some of you this morning about that. <coughs> You'd be blessed to see God's direction for your lives and have the faith that He is who He is and will do what He what He says He will do. And believe in that. You see, God blesses those who put their faith in Jesus the Messiah. In Jeremiah 17, 7, it says this: But blessed is the one who trusts in my in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. God blesses those who follow God's word. In Proverbs 8.34, it says, Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. In Acts 20.35, God blesses those who serve others. It says, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. James 1 and 12, God blesses those who persevere. And that's probably the hardest. That's probably the toughest. In James 1 and 12, it says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, the person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those. Definitely cling to the to our own expectations. If we hold on to what we think should happen, we're going to easily fall away from where Jesus is leading us. And so many of us, you know, allow this muscle on top of our shoulders to mess us all up. I was talking to somebody this morning, and I told him, when God speaks to you, don't think, just do it. Because when you start thinking, you start, is that him? Is it really happening? Should I do it now? Just do it. Mm -hmm. You should be blessed when you do. But if you can adapt your expectations and allow God to work as he chooses in your life, you will be blessed. And that's what this message is about. It's about allowing God to work. So you can be blessed. And people focus on their own problems, pain, loneliness, 
they, they will fall away. But if people will focus on the arrival of Jesus, both past and future, it's working the world and the lives around them. But it comes back to that question at the beginning. Do you believe it? Or not? And Mark is going to play some music here for us. And I'm going to give those who have, who have sensed God this morning. And I encourage you, any week, if you're here at church and you sense God, you need to, you need to respond to Him. It might be a, a, a praise, it might be patting you on the back for what you did or whatever, but whatever it is, you need to respond to him. So she's playing this music this morning. Maybe you haven't been here for a while. Or maybe you you want to rededicate your life back to him and you want to let him know this morning that you know what? You believe. There's no doubt in your mind he is who he is. And you want to celebrate this Christmas. You want to experience it in a way that you never have experienced Christmas. It's not about the presents you open. It's about receiving the gift of Jesus Christ in your heart. That's what it's about. Let's go ahead and see it. So I encourage anyone here this morning who wants to rededicate their life back to Him, who wants to, who wants to maybe accept Him for the first time, allow God to work this morning. When you felt Him, you felt that whatever it is He does to you, be sensitive to that and, and, and move upon it. Don't think about it. Everybody bow their heads for a moment. If you're one of the, those groups, if, God, if you want to turn your life back around and, and you want to tell God that, no, I, I believed in you once, I kind of went away, but I want to I want to rededicate my life to you this morning and I want to believe this morning. Just lift your hand up so I can pray for you this morning. This morning is your morning. Amen. 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 Maybe this morning, you never heard the story this way. You never did believe. This morning, you believe. And you want to tell Jesus that you want to accept him to your heart. You want to believe. Lift your hand up. I want to pray for you this morning also. Amen. Amen. Well, Lord, we thank you, Lord. You got to pray for those this morning, Lord, that have said that they want to, they want to, Rededicate their life to you, Lord. They want to turn back to what you have for them, Lord. And God, hear their hearts, Lord. And for those, Lord, who, for the first time this morning, they said that they, they believe. God, overwhelm them with your spirit, Lord God. Change them, Lord, in ways that only you can change. Strengthen them, Lord, so they can stay close to you. Equip them with all they need to, to accomplish what you call them to, to so they can be blessed. And God, for, for all the rest of us, Lord, just continue to be with us, Lord, and to, it helps to be sensitive to who you are and to, and to, and to share the, the good news with our friends and our family and those around us, Lord. But as always, God, Humble us, Lord, and we want to make sure that you get all the praise and that you get all the glory. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 I don't want you to forget about the love offering on your way out. Well, there'll be a, a plate there for our, for our need.